Flexi wings are becoming a big topic in F1 again. And if one wing is mounted with the center pillar and through the end plates and beam wing with the gearbox case. As the name states, the beam wing acts like a beam. Naturally, when there is a downforce and drag force acting on the wing while driving, the pillar mounting is stiffer than the long beam wing, which means the wing backs off at higher speeds. Because teams want this effect, they increase it by stiffening up the pillar and using a few layers of carbon less for the beam wing. So these rear wings were backing off more in the past. That is the natural deflection of swan neck wings and even if you stiffen it up, you cannot avoid it, just change the magnitude. McLaren created a wing assembly last year where the slot gap between main plane and flap increases while the whole wing backs off. So drag is even lower, the so-called mini DRS. So you can do this by keeping the pillar and DRS stiff while intentionally weakening the flaps tips and we discussed that in my earlier videos. There were protests and hence stricter tests to avoid that. At the end of February, the FIA introduced a new rear wing flexibility article, Article 31517. It says that a force of 750 newtons will be applied in that direction, so vertical direction, on the main plane only, and when they do, the slot gap between main plane and flap shouldn't change more than 2 millimeters. So that is a test to avoid McLaren's mini DRS. So let's take a look at Katia to understand exactly what all that actually means. We can see the location where the force is being applied in blue. This force only acts vertically with 750 newtons, so roughly 75 kg on each side of the wing. The location means 330 mm behind the rear axle center line, 525 mm outboard and in a height 910 mm above the reference plane, so the floor underside. To apply this load, each team needs to provide an adapter which fits to their wing. It needs to lie between 490 and 610 mm laterally from the center and have a maximum area of 15,000 square millimeters. Of course, teams want to spread the load across the wing as much as possible to avoid too much deflection, so they will take the largest area. So that means the length must be 125 mm to reach the maximum area. The teams can decide where they position the adapter in X, but since the force is applied here, there is not much variation. Red Bull already knew that it would be a hard start for them into the season, and so they already complained to the FIA after the preseason test that they should check certain cars for rear wing flexibility. The FIA tested cars before the Australian Grand Prix and all of them were legal. But now, just before the Chinese Grand Prix, they published Technical Directive 055A, these are adjustments or clarifications of the rules. And now they changed the test criteria from an allowed change of the slot gap of plus minus 2 mm down to just 0.5 mm. But because this change is so last minute, they allow a tolerance of 0.25 mm. Most teams said it doesn't affect their cars, but Alpine confirmed that they had to make changes to their rear wing assembly in order to comply with the new criteria. In general, we can say that this test load is only applied in vertical direction and with only 75 kg on each end, while the rear wing creates much more downforce than that while driving. And also while driving you have quite a big drag force which acts longitudinally and is not taken into account by the test. So it's no wonder that teams pass the FIA test and then rear wing still bend in one way or the other while driving. So I hope that clarifies things for the upcoming race weekend because many things have been mixed up in the news. If you want to learn more about F1 technology and want to work in F1 yourself, check out my other videos and online courses which prepare you for a career in F1. See you at the next video.